Praise God. Bwana sifiwe sana. Please, at the back, would you wave at me? Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. You may be seated in his wonderful presence. Hallelujah to Jesus. This morning, I am excited and honored to be with you here in Zimmerman. It's the first time I'm coming over uh, to this church and to this side, actually. As you've heard, uh, I am so humbled uh, to meet Bishop. We actually met for the first time last year when he visited uh, Dallas. And uh, God used him tremendously to speak to the pastor's fellowship in Dallas. He truly, truly blessed us. And we connected. Right, uh, he had been told about me and Bishop Masinde had sent him to me. And uh, even before I got that message, just as I was seated down listening to him, taking notes, we connected. Amen. Amen. I love him. <laughs> and he truly changed the thinking of us pastors. For the short time he was with us that night. He wasn't able to come visit with us and speak in our church, but uh, you can be sure next time he comes, he'll be coming to us. Amen. Amen. I bring you special greetings from our church, Victory Chapel. It's a relatively young church. Uh, we planted in 2011, December 11th. You don't plant churches in December, but the Lord moved us and we planted. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we just celebrated our third year anniversary. This is our fourth year. We have experienced tremendous growth. And as Bishop has mentioned, uh, we are in the process of, of buying. Uh, we started in a small hotel. We, we were leasing uh, two halls, one for the worship and the other one for the children. And uh, four months we had filled that and we moved to another facility and uh, we filled it up then we, we, we leased across the street. So we have two campuses. One on this side is the main sanctuary, and then the offices that, and, and uh, the children's center is across the street. And uh, now we feel that, and we are looking... Sorry about that. We're looking to... Uh, we are in the process, actually, of buying. We've identified two facilities that we trust God uh, either one of them will, will, will be ours in Jesus' name. Amen? So, as he said, yes, we are, we are doing a capital campaign. We are raising funds. Uh, the building costs $2.5 million. And uh, we believe we will get it in Jesus' name. A lot of love and greetings from my wife. I, I was born and raised in Akuru. But I married, I used to say, I used to really love Bishop JB when he would come and visit in Akuru and minister. And I said, I'm in Akuru. This man is based in Nairobi. How can I tap from him? So anytime I was in Nairobi, I used to worship in Umoja. But then, you see, you can be wise or otherwise. <laughs> so I said, if I cannot afford to sit under the, this man and listen to him, I'm going to marry one of his daughters who's been listening to him. And so I, I married from Umoja Deliverance, and uh, they received me there as a son. Amen? My wife was the youth director for many years. Uh, I was, uh, before leaving for the U.S., I served in uh, Egerton University as a student pastor, and uh, we planted Nakuru Chapel, and now we are serving in, in Dallas. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Please come with me to the book of uh, Mark, chapter 5, verse 24 to 34. I'm sure you've read this scripture. I'm sure you've had a sermon from this text. I'm sure you know what we are about to read. But I believe God is about to speak to you in a special way this morning. Mark, chapter 5, and uh, we'll read from verse number 24. If you're there, shout amen. amen. 
Now, the Bible says in Mark 5, 24, it says, So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she got worse. When she heard that Jesus when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she said, if you want to underline that, because she said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once she realized that power at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, and he turned around and in, in the crowd and asked, who touched, who touched me? You see, the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at, he, at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, would you underline, and he said to her. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Please, I invite you to pray with me. Father, we thank you and we bless you for the reading of your word. Thine word is truth, thine word is internal. The entrance of your word brings light. The unfolding of the same gives understanding, making wise the simple. May our simplicity be turned into wisdom by reason of your word. Father, I pray as I speak, I pray anoint my lips. Lord, that I may speak utterances as you have instructed. Lord, we pray that you cause your glorious angels to flap their wings, even as I speak, that they may deliver packages of healing, packages of deliverance, packages of miracles to your children. I take power and authority over every thought that exalts itself against and above the knowledge of Jesus Christ and bring it to submission. Now would you glorify Jesus and him crucified. We thank you and we bless you and somebody shouted amen. Somebody shouted amen. amen. I want to speak to us briefly on a message entitled, Your words are supernatural. Your words are supernatural. Now follow me closely. I want you to hear me and hear me good. I've been blessed by the worship. I've been blessed by the prayers. I've enjoyed that. I've truly blessed the Lord for your service and, 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 and what I've experienced here so far. And I sense that God is here in a special way. And I'm not just saying this to excite you. You're not electrons to be excited so I derive energy out of you. But I'm telling you what I see, what I sense in my spirit, that God is here to speak to you and to set you free. Amen. Therefore, understand that none of you is permitted to live the same way you came. You are not allowed to leave this service as you came. No, it can never happen. You must not live the same way you came. Therefore, open your spirit, lift your spiritual antenna and catch at the frequency of the Holy Spirit. Because as I speak, some of you will be healed. As I speak, some of you will get the answer to the question you've been asking. The Bible says this woman had suffered many years and she heard about Jesus. She had suffered in the hands of many physicians who couldn't address her problem medically. Then she said, are you listening to me? The Bible says, and she said to herself, if only I can reach out and touch the hem of his garment. When she approached Jesus and touched, Jesus inquired and asked, who touched me? And he said, therefore, and she said, and he said, say it with me, and she said, and he said. Ladies and gentlemen, may I submit to you as that before you see signs, you must say. 
there are no signs if there is no saying. Unless you say it this morning, heaven will not say nothing. She said, and having said, Jesus said also. You must say so that heaven can also say. Heaven is waiting for your word so that heaven can agree with your word and respond with you in agreement. In other words, heaven is waiting to homologio to speak the same thing that you are confessing. Therefore, you cannot afford to speak anyhow. Why? Because your words are supernatural. Your words are not just words. When you speak, it's your faith speaking. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And he said, daughter, your faith has healed you. So your words are not just words. Your words are your faith. The opposite is true, that when you speak, if you're not speaking faith, you could be speaking fear or doubt. The choice is yours. You must begin to value and add value to your words. Why? Because you are special, you are unique, you are not average, you are not kawaida. No, 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 no. There is something about you ever since you put your faith and confidence in Christ Jesus. We call those things that are not as though they are because of the kingdom from whence we come from. Now, let me give you some specific examples. Could you follow me to Numbers chapter 13 and verse number 31? I want to show you that your words are supernatural. Numbers 13 and verse 31. The Bible says, but the man who had gone up with him said, hallelujah. Are you seeing that word there, said? We are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, are you seeing it? They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. Continue to chapter 14 verse 1 and 2. In chapter 14, verse 1 and 2, it says, So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. What's happening in this place? You know the story. Moses identifies 12 spies, one from each tribe, and he sends them across the Jordan to go and spy the land. They bring back the evidence. They came with a cluster of, of grapes. They, 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 the, the land was fertile as God had promised. It was indeed flowing with milk and honey. But 10 of them came with a negative report. They said, although the land is this nice, it's walled. Number two, the land devours its people. Then they said, number three, there we saw giants, the son of Anak. And we saw ourselves as grasshopper, and indeed we appeared to them. And these ten people, by their speech, they spread the spirit of fear and unbelief. Because anytime you open your mouth to speak, you're either speaking faith or you're speaking doubt or fear. So they spread a spirit of fear. Moses was leading roughly 600,000 men. It's possible there were an equal number of women that would make 1.2. It's possible that the number of children outnumbered the number of women. Therefore, we are talking at minimum 1.2 to almost 2 million. These 10 people managed to influence over a million people. And the Bible says in chapter 14, and the whole camp cried. Now, if you know something about Jews, they are very solid macho men. When they cry, they swallow their tears. They are like uh, most uh, uh, of African men. But the scriptures here says, that day, the whole camp cried. They wept. It was not 
the way you cry with a handkerchief wiping the corners of your eyes. It was the Western Kenya kind of cry. Mama, you're wailing, falling on the ground. The whole camp was crying. The whole camp was wailing. And they said, if only we had perished in this wilderness. What they said was heard by heaven. Heaven had their fear. Heaven had their doubt. When heaven had, it responded. God told Moses, step aside. I finished these people. Step aside. These people are saying they want to go. Then God changed his mind and said, anyone below 40 and above 20, none of them will enter the land. Why? Because of what they had said. Let me give you another example. In Genesis 11 and verse number 4, Genesis 11, again another very common story that you would know. We call it the story of the Tower of Babel. The story of the Tower of Babel. And I want us to read this together. The Tower of Babel. Genesis 11 verse 4 to verse number 6. It says, And they, come on church, talk to me. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Continue. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Would you underline had built? And the Lord said, let's continue. And the Lord said, the people are one and they all have one language and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing they propose to do will be withheld from them. Ha! These people came together. And they said, let's build ourselves a city and a tower that goes all the way up to heaven. Now put the scripture, let me show you something. In the English language, you have three tenses that we expand to five. You have present tense, that is now. You have future tense. And then you have the past tense. Okay? I'm building right now. I built, that was yesterday. I will build, that is next year. Amen. Amen. But we add two, and the first one is called past perfect. Past perfect means the action has completely been done. He had built by the time we got there. Not, not that he, he built, he had built. Amen. Amen. Future perfect. We shall have built by the time you arrive. That is, in the future when you are coming, we shall have already completed. Let's look at that scripture. The one with uh, 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 Genesis 11. Go back to verse number 4. I want to show you something. And they said, first of all, they said. When they said it was their faith speaking. These were unbelievers. These were not uh, the church in Zimmerman. These were unbelievers. And they said... Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. They are proposing. This is at the proposal level. Come, an idea. Let us build ourselves. Continue. But the Lord came down to see the tower which the sons of men had built. Hey, not that they built, they had built. That's not just past tense, past perfect, already completed. Wait a minute, continue the next line. And the Lord said, indeed the people are one and they all have one language and this is what they begin. Wait, 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 wait a minute, I'm confused. It said they had built. But the Lord is saying, let us go down and, and see what they're doing because this is what they begin to do. In other words, when they said, heaven received. 
as far as heaven was concerned, that project, although it was, didn't have a plot yet, they hadn't allocated the plot. They hadn't gone to the bank to ask for loan or mortgage. They hadn't drawn the plans. The architect had not submitted the plans yet. Are you listening to me? The project manager had not yet said, this is how much we're going to spend on construction. This is how much ballot we need. This is how much sand we need. No, 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 no. It was still at the proposal level. But because they said, heaven had. When heaven had, the project was already complete. These were unbelievers. But what they said was loaded with faith. When God had, as far as he was concerned, it was completely done. I came to tell you in the ear of uncommon blessing, you are already blessed. Not that you will be, as far as heaven is concerned, it is already done. Turn to your neighbor, my business is already started. My promotion is already issued. My church is already finished. Come on, somebody shout yes. yes. My words are supernatural. Amen. Already done. Already settled. That should change the way you speak. That should change the way you, 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 you address people. Listen to me. It's not just speaking. It's releasing your faith. Let me give you the simple rules of belief. Whatever you believe is true to you. Whatever you believe, positive or negative, is true to you. So if you believe I am rich, I am blessed, I am, I am an overcomer, indeed it is true to you. A story is told of a, a, a couple of young men who were naughty and wanted to take advantage of Amze. They saw him coming, this is in the village, they said this guy, we, we've, we've been saying we'll do something to him. So the man came and they were drawing water and he asked them, can I have a drink? And they said, oh, you want a drink? He said, yes. Okay. Give him the drink. So they gave him this container. You know this gorogoro thing? And the guy closed his eyes and drank the whole, the whole thing. And he placed the, the container down. One of the young men said, Oh my goodness, I can't believe you took it all. He said, yeah, I was very thirsty. No, 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 no. You took it all, including the frog that was inside. <laughs> he said, is that so? Yeah, you did. So he put his hand in, in his mouth to try to throw up he couldn't. He went home. He told his wife, I'm feeling funny. I'm, 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 I'm not really well. I'm telling you. The woman was like, you left this house okay. You are not sweating. You don't have fever. You're all right. What's wrong with you? He said, that night he never slept. The following morning he couldn't leave his bed. They took him to the doctor because this is a psychosomatic sickness. The, 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 the microscope and the x-ray couldn't catch nothing. And the man grew from worse to worse. They tried everything. He was on his way out. Some elders heard about the story. And the young men heard that they are now killing a man. So they came and repented to his wife. They said, ma'am, we are sorry. We lied to this guy. We told him he swallowed a frog. <laughs> and the woman said, indeed, he's been saying he ate a frog. And I've been wondering where is this coming from? So when the, el the elders heard about that, they said, okay, we can treat that. They did a concussion, you know, of all kinds of leaves, made a bitter drink, then uh, boiled it, gave him to drink. As usual, you know, some, some habits are making or breaking. He closed his eyes and drank the thing, the whole thing. Because of the bitterness, he started throwing up. While he was throwing, he's closing his eyes, throwing all over the place. They threw a frog right there where he was vomiting. <laughs> They said, oh, it's here, it's out, it's out, it's out. And he said, I actually feel better. <laughs> what you believe, hello somebody, turn to your neighbor, what you believe is true to you. Therefore, I believe I'm a millionaire. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm the best. I believe I'm an overcomer. I believe this is my ear. I believe this church is growing. This church is expanding. 
And as I believe, so I speak. I'm not speaking what I'm seeing. I'm speaking what I believe. And as I speak, that's my faith. Therefore, from tomorrow, as you go to your shop, speak to those items. Tell them you are selling out this week. Go very early in that office before your boss arrives. Step in there and speak, knowing that as you're speaking, you are releasing your faith. I'm the best in this office. This corporation cannot survive without me. Oh, they don't know who I am bad. They, they don't know who I am. I'm a child of the king. You are just, they told you you're a house help. No, 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 you are not a house help. Go and say, I'm a domestic engineer. Yeah. This house is intact because of me. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You've been struggling writing your papers. Say, I'm an author. Yeah. I am a writer. Yeah. According to your confession, so shall it be. Yeah. We are overcomers. This year of uncommon blessing, we are breaking through. No limitations. That's why I told you, none of you is permitted to live here the same way you came. You cannot go the same way you came. So God said, let's go and see what they have begun to do. Because now, look at it in the scripture, now nothing they propose to do will be withheld from them. Listen. I was reading my scripture somewhere, sometime way back. And I discovered the principle, the law of giving and receiving. The law of tithing. When I discovered that, I said, ah, Satan, you are too late now. Because except the word of God be not true, I can never be small. Never. Let me carry on. Someone will say, but pastor, what if I'm just saying? You know, there are these things we just say because we were joking, we were not serious. What, is I was, what if I was just saying? Let me give you a scripture to answer you. Matthew 12, 36. The Bible says, but every word that, it says, but I say to you that for every idle word, men may speak. Men may speak. They will give account of it on the day of judgment. For, your, for by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Many of us, when we read that scripture, we say, ah, people will give an account Siku ya kiyama, on the day of judgment. No, 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 no. It's not on that day. You give an account as you continue living. Amen. So each idle word you say, you know, we are, we are struggling. We are just survivors. Uh -huh. Each word you give, each word you state, you will give an account because that's an idle word. You know, pastor, this is my sickness. I've had it for many years. Your sickness, uh -huh, you will give an account of it. Somebody say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Somebody say, I'm the righteousness of God. The, of God. the Bible says in 1 John 5 and verse number 4, this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Therefore, speak that faith that is the victory that has overcome the world. You remember the story of Elisha? It's found in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Quickly, the story goes like this. There was, there was, there was famine. There was drought in the land. And uh, there was no food to eat. People started eating. A, a donkey head was being sold at the market, at the marketplace. They were eating the heads of donkeys. It was very, the economy was bad. It, it had crashed. It was terrible. Now, Elisha got a word of, from the Lord, and it says in chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, Elisha replied, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a seer of finest flour will sell for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of heaven, could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, Elisha answered. 
but you will not eat any of it. Look, this was the uh, uh, officer on whose arm the king leaned. In other words, he was the king's bodyguard. Elisha sees how dry and droughtful the whole place is. The things are bad. And he says, the word of the Lord says this. <coughs> Tomorrow, at the gates of Samaria, barley and, and wheat flour shall, shall sell this much. And this man, who was an officer, who was eating at the palace, he, he was working in the palace, so he was eating the king's food. He asked a question. In fact, he said, even if God could open the floodgates of heaven, could this thing be? Now, this is an army officer. He's trained to think. He's trained to be logical. <coughs> you just don't go for battle. You ask questions. You ask intelligent questions. By the way, questions really tell how wise or otherwise you are. <laughs> so think through your questions. The Clinton family started training Chelsea while she was age three how to ask questions. You can't just ask questions. Sometimes you ask a question and it reveals the level of your ignorance. They said, Kuuliza si ujinga, but you need to frame your question in an intelligent manner. You belong to the kingdom. So this man asked a rhetoric question. A rhetoric question is a question that does not need an answer. We are going, ain't we? It really doesn't need an answer. It's just a question. He asked a question, and the question was, even if, seeing how things are, I'm thinking as an army officer, seeing how things are, again you are talking, not in the gates of Jerusalem. Come on. We are Jews. You think in the gates of Samaria, come on, like, you, Sisi Wayahudi, we will go to the gates of Samaria to get a seer of a, 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 a flaw for, for, for a shekel? Come on, Bana. Elijah, Elisha had the words. But actually, Elijah, Elisha didn't just hear the words. He had unbelief or doubt coming out challenging his faith. And he responded not to the officer, but to the spirit of doubt that was being projected by the question. And he said, you shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not test of it. That shall not be your story. Everything you see and desire, you shall test of it. The following day, there were, there were lepers, four of them. They were outside the camp, outside the walls of Jerusalem. They asked themselves another rhetoric question. If we stay here, we die. If we go out there, we die. We cannot be accepted in the city. Therefore, less, it's better to go. So they started walking towards Samaria. God, the one whom you and I serve, is a mighty God. Oh. He put an, an, an amplifier system under their feet and connected wirelessly to the speakers at the camp of Samaria. Four lepers with vidondas all over the place. Their, their, their toes are almost cutting off. But as they were dragging their feet in the camp of the Samarians, they were hiding. Boom, 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 boom. They, the Israelites are coming. Those are chariots. Those are chariots of fire. The Bible says they left the camp, leaving all the spoils behind. The four lepers came, arrived, found the camp empty. They helped themselves and then asked another question. Now that we've blessed ourselves, how fair is it? Let's go back and tell our people this is what's going on. So they traveled back overnight and went and told the people in Jerusalem. When the people heard that Samarian camp is empty, loaded with stuff, the goodness of the Lord, 
they started running and pressing towards Samaria. The gates were not wide enough to accommodate the whole city coming out. The officer was like, order, order, stop, stop, we need to go orderly. The people trampled on him and went. He died that morning. Elisha said, indeed, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not test any of it. Listen, two things. Unless you see it, you cannot seize it. For you to seize it, you have to see. Therefore, may the Lord open the eyes of your understanding that you may see it. Whatever it is, it could be a promotion. It could be a new job. It could be a new plot. It could be an investment in the stock market. Ah, it could be the healing of your child. It could be the coming back of a rebellious child. It could be the salvation of your man, the salvation of your wife. Whatever it is, may the Lord cause you to see it. And when you see it, begin speaking it. Begin confessing it. Why? Because your words are supernatural. Therefore, every one of you women that has a husband that has not been serving the Lord, has a husband that has been wasting money in alcoholism, I call them back from the bar. I call them back from their gun. I call them into the kingdom. I call them into the faith because I see them saved. I see them serving in the church. I see them as ashes. Oh yeah, you may be seeing him coming late, uh, almost falling down, but I see an usher in that man. I see a church elder in that man. Treat him well and love him and serve him because you are serving the future church elder. In the name of Jesus. He's not a drunk. Jesus came for such. Therefore, we will love him. Even when he says stuff that doesn't make sense, that he owns all the cattle in Zimmerman and there are no cattle, we still love him because in that guy, he's a gatekeeper. He will be serving in security out there because that's what heaven is seeing. I don't know this morning what you are seeing. Man, I see you blessed. Remember, I warned you, you are not electrons. You see, if you take electrons, break them, excite them, you create energy. That's how they create nuclear energy, okay? You excite them. I'm not here to excite you. I'm telling you as I heard the Lord say to me. You are healed. You are delivered. That debt is paid off. In the name of Jesus. That case pending at court. I speak to the spirit of the judge. I command him to have favor on you. Listen, I was driving with my wife from, from a city called uh, Labok, Texas. And we had gone for a conference and we were, we were rushing uh, on a Sunday morning. We left there at 3 a.m. Because I wanted to be in, in Dallas by, by 8 a.m. So that I can speak in the uh, 11 o'clock service. So we left quite early, and uh, we, we, we had rented a nice huge car, and uh, we were driving fast, enjoying ourselves. At some point, my wife slept, and I continued driving. It started raining heavily. I remember reducing the speed just because it was raining so heavily. And I, after reducing the speed, I went for another like five miles, and out of nowhere, the car skid, made several turns, hit a post, Look back from where we were. This is a major super highway. I know you have super highway here. Now, there we have highways. <laughs> there are roads and then there are roads. This was one of those. You do 120 kilometers an hour on those. So, we, we stopped and uh, the policeman came. There was no witness. Nothing is hurt. We are okay. And he says, because you've hit this post, this post, you're on an interstate highway and you've hit a post, you've hit the post of Texas. Therefore, he said, I'm going to give you a ticket as a representative of Texas. So he gave me the ticket, two of them, one for speeding and one for hitting the thing. And he said, if you, if you want to argue against it, come to court. I said, I'll see you in court. 
I went, we, we, we called for help and uh, we, went, we managed to, to go home. We managed to go to church and had a service. When we went home that evening, I went to the Lord and said, Lord, I was coming from serving and I was going to serve. There is no better boss than you. I mean, I was in your business. You see, if it's the Lord's mission, he takes the bill. If it's mine, I pay, but this one is yours. So, Lord, this, this, let's sort these things out to Elevane to Vizuri. Lord, this one is yours. And the Lord told me, it is settled according to your word. So, I, I left my bedroom. I went and told my wife in the kitchen, don't worry about it. It is taken care of. One month, two months, I don't hear anything from the state of Texas. The fourth month, I saw a letter. I'm being summoned at the court. And I told my, my wife, saw it. she said, you told me you've taken care of it. I said, ah, honey, taken care of, like Jana, like, hey, hey, this one is taken care of. That morning, I woke up, dressed myself, and I got those papers. I got my license, everything. I knelt in our bedroom. I said, Lord, here are the papers. And while I was kneeling down, the Lord said, use your wisdom. And I said, ah, okay, I know what you mean. I want this case dismissed. Okay, yeah, go ahead and dismiss it. So I prayed. I said, a very simple prayer, you know, two minutes. Lord, I speak to the spirit of the officer who gave me the ticket. I command him at one o'clock. He must never be anywhere in Fort Worth. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. I showed up to court. When I showed up, they called my name. And uh, we had several of us who had those kinds of tickets. And the judge was waiting. And he was waiting. And he talked to the clerk. Then he waited. He's what we call, quote-unquote, rednecks. When they get angry, they turn pink. He started turning pink. He banged the, 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 his, his desk. He said, where is this prosecutor? The, the clerk whispered to, to, to her, he hasn't arrived yet. There was a young man seated next to me and he was really in panic. I told him, relax, I am here. Because I'm here, things are okay. Then the judge talked to us. Our names were called and he said, has anyone of you heard of a, a Friday jail-free day? I say, uh, he said, anyone of you who's heard about it, stand up. Well, I, I didn't even know what he was speaking about. So I half stood. He said, no, if you're sure, just stand up. Oh, so I stood up. I told the young man, stand up, stand up. The rest remained sitting. He said, you guys have heard of the Friday jail-free day? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, those of you who are standing, case dismissed. Go, get out of my court. <laughs> the rest who are seated, they were told, you have a case to answer. You will come back to court tomorrow. <laughs> Listen to me now. I don't know what case is pending for you. But in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak. You see, children of the palace, children of the king, speak the language of the palace. Children of the king. There is, at the palace, they have a language, oh. But the language of state house is different from the language of Mukuru Kwanjenga. So you are a child of the king. Upgrade your tank. Upgrade your lips and speak the language of our palace. Whoever has been messing up with you, I speak to their spirit and command it to submit to you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not common. Therefore, you walk in the level of uncommon blessing. Are you, is somebody listening to me? Come on now. I mean... You must update, you must upgrade the way you speak. Because you just don't speak words, you speak and release faith. Let me look for parking space and then we'll close. Do you remember this, those people at the, when Jesus was being crucified? Pilate asked, guys, I've listened to this case. I've not had, I mean, this man is just... Every Easter, I release, um, I release every Passover, I release a man to you. I have Barnabas here, and I have, I have Barnabas here, and I have uh, Jesus. Which one would you want to let go? They said to Jesus, they said, crucify him. 
He said, is he not your king? No, crucify him, crucify him. In fact, they added something else. They said, may his blood be on our head and that of our children. They were just saying, right? Because this is psychopathy. They were just saying, hey, ODM, ODM, crucify. <laughs> they were, it's, what I'm trying to show you is not which party I support, but psychopathy. You just see people are going to the stadium and you also say, hey, yeah. That's what they were saying. But even in that psychophancy, where you haven't processed what you're saying, you are not just saying, you are releasing words. And those words are loaded with faith or doubt. Their words went to heaven. May his blood be on us and on our children. Seventy short years after, 70 AD, the Roman soldiers came, attacked Jerusalem. They tell us in theology that those who were found in Jerusalem, when the walls of Jerusalem were destroyed and the temple burnt down to ashes, they were the, the, the second and third generation of these people that crucified Jesus, that were saying, may his blood be on us. They should have said, may his blood be on us, period. But they added, and our children. When I saw that, I said, I must also upgrade the way I speak. So when I'm asking for my blessing, I said, those blessings, may they be on me and on my children and my children's children. My daughter is 10 and the second one is 8. Right now, today, before the Lord, my wife and I have finished praying their college we've secured their scholarship we've secured which university they'll go we are now praying for their spouses like high school primary to limaliza kitambo you can't just be saying oh pastor pray for me i just turned 30 you know and now 31 nasioni mtu ah hey fungua macho na umuite go before the lord and say lord let's let's settle this thing i am your child Let's settle this thing now. Once and for all. I'm not going to a hundred cashers asking for this thing. We are settling it now. Are you listening to me? Yes. Don't just speak aimlessly. You know, they tell me, ah, akuna my brother squeeze. Ah, no, 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 no. According to you. But as a pastor, I see them all the time. The brothers come and say, ah, Pasi, nowadays, Mazeni Wagum, according to you. I know so many nice, kind, loving, you know, good sisters. Change your language. Let me finish with this example. <laughs> I was praying in our church. I, was, I made an altar and I was praying for people. And right there, there was this brother who, who, whom I've known for quite a while. And he's been trusting God for a spouse. And he was serving as an usher. And so I'm praying, laying hands, and they are, they, are, they, are, they, are being they are being received. And when I stood to pray for this lady, the Lord lift, told me, look up. And I, I look at this brother. He's a deacon in our church. And, and, I, and I tell him, catch your miracle. And he's looking at me, standing like, pursue your anguki. I'm like, catch your miracle. And quickly, I just laid my hand on her and I'm walking. And when I touched her, she fell and the brother Amen. received the guy. <laughs> Do you know, three months later, they came to the office. I asked, what's going on between the two of you? Tena mbona mna karibiana, ibebu separate kidogo? They said, Pastor, you remember when you prophesied, catch your miracle? I said, oh, this was it. Yes. Okay, come sit down here. <laughs> so I told you, lift your spiritual antennas and catch at his frequency. You will not leave this house today empty-handed. No, 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 no. My time is up. Can I read you two scriptures? Just two and then we close. Two and then we, just two. Words are very powerful. Do you know you are saved just by words? You had words. You lifted your hand. You came to the front. You were told, Rudia, you my angle. 
And then after that, you were saved. And imagine even your name was entered into the book of life just by words. Never, ever underestimate the power of words. The Bible says in Proverbs 21 and 23, whoever keeps his mouth keeps his soul from trouble. Whoever keeps his mouth keeps his soul from trouble. And then it says in Proverbs 6 and verse 2, you are saved. Ha! Please project this for me. Proverbs 6 and verse number 2. Can we read it together? You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. You are snared. Unategwa kwa maneno yako. You are taken captive by your words. Could you, is that the, can you try, uh, you, can you try the King James? Try the, the new King James of that, of that text. You are snared. Okay, the other one says you are ensnared. All right, very good. Now, one more thing and then we, we pray. In Luke 6.17, again please, these two more. Luke 6.17, just show you something here brief. Luke 6.17 and then we look at Luke 5.15. Okay, there it is. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. They came to hear. To hear what? Words. And those words healed them. That's why Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They were healed not because he laid hands on them. They were healed because they had the words he spoke. What he spoke was faith and it healed them. Then in chapter 5 of Luke and verse number 15, they came to hear and be healed. Luke 5 and 15. Luke 5 and 15. However, the report went around concerning him all the more. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed. They came to hear. And as they were hearing, they were healed of their infirmities. Therefore, as you hear me speak this morning, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. I release you from whatever has been battling you. Whatever bondage, whatever barrier, whatever barricade, whatever force, whatever demon, whatever, whatever spirit that has, uh, that has been waging war against you. As you are hearing me this morning, I command your freedom, I command your victory, I command your success, I call you a winner, I call you the redeemed of the Lord, I call you the righteousness of God, I call you the blessed of the Lord. You are blessed as you come in and blessed as you go out. Blessed is the fruit of your basket. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. You are a winner. You are an overcomer. I call you rich. I call you a millionaire. I call you an influencer. I call you the next generation of leaders. You are to be feared and revered. Wherever the sole of your feet steps on, I command you to prosper. I command you to, op to occupy until he comes. You are truly blessed of the Lord. You are heavily loaded with substances and good health and peace. I bless that marriage. I bless your children. As they go to school, I call them the head and not the tail. I command favor upon them before their teachers and instructors. As they play in the field, they are well protected. As they ride with other children, they are well disciplined. They are children of the Lord, the redeemed of the Lord. Every single man and every single woman, I call you husband and wife. I bless you with a beautiful wedding. All expenses paid for and a lovely honeymoon in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every one of you serving this vision. Every one of you submitted to my dad bishop. I call you blessed. As you serve him, the Lord shall call angels to serve you. 
in the name of Jesus. As you support this vision and this ministry, the Lord shall support you us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless you, Jehovah. We call it done in the name of Jesus. Woo! Woo! Shekata labo presekete lebo. Shando labo seketa labo. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody bless the Lord. 